Welcome to the Quirks of German X, the series where I take a look at the German ports of games to see where they differ to the originals, like censorship, voice acting and other quirky changes. Last video I took a look at German Wolfenstein 3D, or rather, what little of it actually made it over here. You could take a look at it just to see what topics I like to discuss in this series. Also includes a very interesting interview with Rebecca Heinemann, one of the original devs for the SNES port of the game. And with that video I fully committed to talking about the entire Wolfenstein series. We're deep in enemy territory now, so my new order is to return to Castle Wolfenstein once more to see if any of these new colossuses have any fresh young blood left to spill. Uh, 2009. So let's begin with Wolfenstein 3D's immediate, or rather 9 years delayed, sequel, Return to Castle Wolfenstein. We'll be taking a look at the original physical release, not the Steam one. I wanted to get the unpatched, unchanged, unupdated version from 2001 to see what exactly it was like on launch over here. Which unfortunately also meant the game crashed every 5 minutes. Also, if you like these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you! Alright, debriefing is over, let's put on our helmets and dive right in and begin with the good old censorship. If there's one thing German games are known for, it's how viciously they get torn apart by censors for having any sort of violence in them. And of course, Return to Castle Wolfenstein is no different with... Hold on. What's this red jam coming out of enemies? Is this... Is this blood? They've got blood in this game? In my German Wolfenstein game? And enemies explode into messy chunks with fountains of blood and viscera showering the floor around them? There's even... There's, there's maimed and disfigured corpses lying around everywhere. Are we sure this is the right version? My goodness, this is basically the first time in my entire series that the blood and gore went completely unchanged. Granted, jibs do vanish, but that's probably due to optimization. But it's an actual gory German game, how incredible is that? And this actually does confuse me a bit, because if you've watched the Wolfenstein 3D episode, I pointed out that the reason for it getting banned wasn't because of the Nazi imagery, but because of the glorification of violence, i.e. the blood and gore. And yet this one was okay? How peculiar. Well, here's hoping that going forward they're going to keep up the strength with the other Wolfenstein titles. Spoiler, they would not. Well then, let's see what was actually censored. The Nazi imagery. Eh, uh, hmm. You know, I think I kind of have to clarify something and it's quite concerning I have to do it in the first place, but here goes. <clears throat> Nazis are bad. Not just that, they're terrible at everything they do. They're also massively pathetic losers. I don't care what form they take, whatever they may call themselves, they're all the damn same and can all go to hell. And if you think that's controversial, then maybe you should follow your leader and go to hell too. I love the Wolfenstein series, but I don't love Nazis. So to hammer down the point of how awful Nazis were and to not even give them the time of day, even if you kill them by the hundreds in the games, I'll be exclusively referring to all Nazis as pea babies from now on. Because that's all they are, whiny, pathetic crybabies whose brown ideology is indistinguishable from what they leave in their diapers. Glad to have that cleared up. So then, let's take a look at how the Nazi, sorry, pee baby imagery was censored. A comparison to the originals will be shown in the upper left corner. Thanks to Murphy Black and Schnittberichte for the images and further information. First up, some pee baby symbols like swastikas or SS ruins were just removed, like these logos here, or made unrecognizable like on the crates and barrels. This also applies to the paintings, which I believe are based on real life ones, but I could be wrong. In one of them, they also took out a drawing of Hitler just hovering in the background. How gaudy. A unique change is to this emblem, where they cut the hair of the women and took out one of them so they wouldn't look like a swastika. Hey, I said it was a unique change, not a clever one. There's also a hard to miss one on this beer stein, where they folded down this lad's arm so he wouldn't do the pee baby salute. Most swastikas, however, got turned into the Wolfenstein logo that you can see on the game's box itself. This affects most of the flags you can find all over the place, and even smaller details you can only really spot if you're paying attention. I think it's a bit inconsistent which swastikas were just removed because they were so small, and which actually got changed. But let's talk about that Wolfenstein logo, because my goodness, what a marvelous design. It's clearly inspired by the Frakturschrift, so it's very much aligned with the P baby aesthetic, and even looks rather similar to the Wolfenstein 3D font. But it also seems to be taking inspiration from other Pea Baby symbols, either with wings like the ones of the Reichsadler, or both similar to the SS Siegrune, depending on the version of it. It's also very angular and straight, which fits perfectly with the uptight Pea Baby morals and their inane idea of the perfect Aryan human. 
And it's way more pleasant to look at than the goddamn swastika, which just looks uninspired. I mean, of course it does, that's why the pea babies would like it. And not even Bethesda's own triangular take on it is any better. In other news, the Iron Cross has stayed in the game this time, since, as I pointed out in the last video, it's still being used by the Bundeswehr of this day and is the pea baby exclusive symbol. However, what did get scrapped was Hitler's mustache, so Startmeister is back. Hooray? I genuinely love how they're using actual photographs of Hitler and just mastered his beard. Like, it's still the same person, he just shaved. Incredible that Hitler's only lasting legacy is having ruined perfectly fine facial hair. Those were all the changes done to the decoration found in the world of the game, so let's analyze the actual characters living there. Just like before, a couple swastikas were simply erased, like these ones from the logos of the airbase personnel. The other swap. <laughs> the other swap the The other swap the. <laughs> The other swastikas and ruins were swapped with the Wolfenstein logo, like on their armbands, their badges, the helmets, and so on and so forth. The only issue I take with this is that it looks remarkably similar to the Reichsadler at times, which did remain on the uniform, same as the Iron Crosses again. Just looks a bit samey. What also stayed, and surprisingly so, is the skull of the SS Totenkopf Division on certain caps. I struggle to understand why this one was acceptable, considering it's directly referencing the same people that oversaw the concentration camps, i.e. among the biggest war criminals out there. The swastika was used by all pea babies, but only the worst of the worst pea babies wore the skulls. Very strange. The elite guards or pea baby dominatrices are also exactly as sexualized as they were originally. I feel it's worth pointing out, considering Valve manually removed the breast jiggling of the assassins in German Half-Life 1, which were pretty much the same character as these. But here, they're free to wear clothing that leaves very little to the imagination. How very strange once again. The non-human characters, like the Experiments and the Übersoldat, also spot the Wolfenstein logo. I just love that one of their first thoughts when creating these creatures was giving them the proper branding, even though they are clearly unfinished. This also applies to the undead warriors you fight in the crypts, as well as Heinrich I. I always thought it was weird that 1,000-year-old skeletons would have pea baby symbols on their armor and clothes, so this makes more sense. Perhaps the Wolfenstein logo is centuries old and was only adopted by the Germans. Then again, the swastika itself is also way older than the pea babies ever were, and it was pretty tongue-in-cheek to begin with, so I'm not really that bothered either way. Other changes include the removal of the Fahne Hoch, also known as the Horst Wessel Lied, the anthem of the pea baby party. Not only is this a welcome change because pea babies were really proud of it and you can't give these people any enjoyment, but also because it's honestly just trash. Just reminds me of German marksman's festivals. The fascists may have the outfits, but the communists have the music. Any references to real world pea babies were also taken out, so the SS Paranormal Division is just the Paranormal Division. Heinrich Himmler was also renamed to Heinrich Höller. Diese Typen sind Teil von Höllers erst kürzlich formierter paranormaler Division. This is another good change in my book, as Hölle translates to Hell, and that is most definitely where Hope, the head of the SS, suffers for all eternity. However, they made no changes to his appearance, which is odd, as Hitler at least lost his mustache. I suppose Himmler just isn't as recognizable, and I guess his pathetic excuse for a beard wasn't even worth for the devs to consider shaving off. Death said, aka Totenkopf, was renamed to Der Schädel, meaning the skull. It means the same, but come on, Totenkopf is so much cooler! His real name was also changed from Wilhelm Strasse to Wilhelm Strese. Der Kraut mit dem Monokel ist Wilhelm Strese, auch bekannt als der Schädel. Neither of them sound more or less like real names than the other, so I have no clue why this was done. For some reason, a couple other names also got replaced. Like Professor Zemf being turned into Schneider, a much more generic surname. Gehen Sie mir aus dem Weg, Schneider! Maybe they did this because the original sounds too much like the German word for mustard, Senf. The pea babies themselves were also completely reworked into the wolves. Was genau haben die Wölfe vor? Not only is it a cute reference to the game itself, but they even extended this naming scheme to their ranks. So the Führer is called the Leitwolf, the Alpha Wolf. Der Leitwolf wartet auf ihre Ankunft. While officers are Rudelleiter, meaning pack leaders, or Revierleiter, translating to territory leader. Wie lauten ihre Befehle, Rudelleiter? I think doubling down on the whole Wolfenstein concept is such a wonderfully outlandish idea. 
As Shallow VA pointed out, it makes little sense for anyone but Soldier Station at Castle Wolfenstein itself to wear the emblems, but considering they call themselves the Wolves in this game, it makes sense for it to be a Universal logo. It's just a very clever way of censoring the P-Babies while still being reminiscent of them, just with all the uncomfortable undertones. And it perfectly fits the not-so-serious tone that the game is going for. But luckily, that's not where the cheese ends, no. Instead, it also continues into the voice acting. So why don't we take a look, or rather, a listen, at that. Now, because there's a million different characters in the game, and most of them aren't even that relevant, certainly not having character development to speak of, I'm not going to point out every single one. Just the ones I thought were the most interesting. So if I don't mention someone, just assume that they were unremarkable, so neither standing out very positively or negatively in any way, basically just doing the job exactly as they should. Also, as is tradition with these older games, I have no idea who voices who. Much like Valve's games, there's no mentions of any of the German voice actors anywhere. Thanks to Synchron Forum, I know at least some of them though. Let's begin with a German character, since that's the most obvious change. The most prominent roles are the P-Babies themselves, so the common soldiers, officers and so on. Not all of the lights were dubbed, such as the pain and death screams. Since they don't sound non-German when streaming, this makes sense. This also goes for the zombies with their goofy... However, some of the original lines did creep into the game, but only in the outro. This isn't even a pre-rendered cutscene, so I have no idea why this is. I mean, even the intro was dubbed. Also, fun fact about this line. The German is completely broken as they're saying Angreif die Amerikaner, which translates to attack the Americans, but completely literally. It should be Greif den Amerikaner an. However, when I played the game as a kid, I used to think they shouted Angreif die Amerikaner! Which is still broken, but would mean nobody attacks anything here, or nobody better be attacking here. All of the soldiers are voiced by different people, but much like in Condition Zero and Half-Life, they are often used interchangeably. So one character might have two to three different voices. Like in those games, it does kind of work here too, since all of them go for a B-movie vibe. It does however make it harder for me to tell where one person ends and another begins, so there might be some overlap between these. The first one to point out is this fella, where they committed the cardinal sin of making a pee baby adorable. Ich bin sicher, ich habe etwas gehört. Ich denke, wir sollten das besser untersuchen. Klasse. Der Aufzug ist endlich repariert. He just sounds so cute and innocent. That's the opposite of what pee babies should be. They weren't innocent. They knew what they were doing. Also, I swear I've heard this actor before, likely in a children's cartoon or audiobook. Soldier number two is a bit more like what you'd expect from a P-Baby, being more gruff and throaty. Otto erzählte, er und Frau von Braun haben über die Sicherheit gestritten. Das hat ihn wohl etwas mitgenommen. Wohl wahr. Wir sehen uns später. Ich muss den Wagen polieren. Ja, ja, ich weiß, ich weiß. <laughs> it's a completely exaggerated and over-the-top voice, but it works just so well. This one also reminds me of someone I've heard before, I just don't know who. Soldier number three might be the same actor as the first. He's kind of a mix between the previous two, a bit more serious, but just as cheesy. Ich habe die Bestellung schon vor sechs Monaten aufgegeben. Aber jetzt können wir uns glücklich schätzen, wenn der Kram vor 1947 hier ist. Soldier number four is just serious and realistic. Ja, hoffentlich kriegen wir bald warmes Wasser. Ich habe seit zwei Wochen nicht gebadet. Kannst du dir das vorstellen? Honestly stands out because of it, since he just sounds so... Normal. How creepy. Now the next one, number five, is definitely someone I've heard before. Was? Auferstehung der Toten? Na komm schon. Für das hältst du mich einen Idioten? 38er Latour. 38er Latour. Es gibt den Wein hier unten nicht. Es ist hoffnungslos. German cartoons always have a character with this exact squeaky, nasally voice, mostly the bad guys. Very comical and hilarious to listen to, and probably my favorite out of all of them. The last one is also hilarious to listen to, but for the wrong reasons. He just sounds like they needed one of the developers to lend their voice because all the actors had already finished their work. Ich bitte um Entschuldigung, Rudleiter. Aber das Laden der neuen Torpedos dauert deutlich länger als du nächst erwartet. The only thing this reminds me of is Half-Life 1. 
Die Probe wurde gerade im Testraum abgeliefert. The English P-Babies were much more over the top as they all basically did a bad Schwarzenegger impression. Oh, it's freezing out here. <laughs> it's going to be even colder than last night. I hope we get some new blankets soon. Here, they sound more like actual Germans, obviously, but it doesn't mean they can't be corny themselves. For instance, they're really giving it their all when yelling orders during combat. My favorite one has got to be the Mein God line, which I already adored in the English dub. But because of how weirdly it's pronounced here, I kind of prefer it. It really is this game's Mindleben! What I also like is how much more natural a lot of the more mundane conversations are with these actors. This spot is worth mentioning because I think everyone has had an exchange like this before in their lives. Mir reicht's. Mir reicht's mit diesem Ort hier. Noch so ein Tag und die können mich ins ins Irrenhaus Was einliefern. Was ist dieses Mal? Es ist schon wieder das dämliche Raketenflugzeug. Oh Gott. Kannst du dich noch an die dämlichen Verstärkungsringe erinnern, die an der Schubdüse, die von denen wir seit August wissen, dieselben, die den Leutnant nie interessiert hatten? Ja, ja. Jetzt muss ich bei diesem beschissenen Wetter raus und die austauschen, weil irgendwer Oberintelligentes meint, die müssen in zwei Stunden in Bereitschaft sein. Reminds me a lot of the casual Barney from German Half-Life, who just wants to go home and not be bothered by anyone. Ja, ja, ich weiß. Probleme mit dem Zugangssystem. Wir haben heute Morgen überall in der Anlage Probleme. And speaking of Half-Life, the announcer hier inside Levels reminds me of the one from that game. Achtung! Eindringling! Eindringling! Sicherheitsteams! Bitte melden! An das Militärpersonal! Kilo in der Lima mit äußerster Härte durchführen! This one doesn't have quite the stick of his butt, but he's getting there. Professor Schneider also sounds rather close to the German half life scientist in my opinion. Frau von Braun, ich warne Sie. Wenn Sie weiter auf diesen Irrsinn bestehen, bin ich gezwungen, Ihr Verhalten der Abteilung für innere Angelegenheiten zu melden. Ich weiß nicht, was schlimmer ist. Ihr Soldaten mit dem Befehl, dieses Institut zum Schweigen zu bringen oder diese üblen Aliens. Now for someone different, the Elite Guards. These ones are super strict and bossy, which perfectly fits the BDSM angle they're going for. Was glotzen Sie so? Sie werden noch viel Schlimmeres sehen, wenn Sie sich nicht bewegen. Stehen Sie hier nicht mit dem Daumen im Mund rum. Durchsuchen Sie die Umgebung. Ach. Da sind Sie sich sicher? Wie beruhigend. Dann können wir ja alle aufatmen. Bewegung, sonst mache ich euch Beine. Wenn wir hinsehen, als erstes würde ihr Blut anfangen zu kochen. Und danach? Naja, danach ist es eigentlich auch egal. Oder nicht? I absolutely would, if they weren't pee babies. Though, I guess they aren't in this board. Hmm. The mad scientist doctor from the intro level is also pretty remarkable, simply because of how insanely creepy it sounds. Kommen Sie rein, Soldat. Holen Sie den anderen. Der hier ist fast fertig. Da sind Sie ja. Ketten Sie den da an die Wand und nehmen den anderen vom Tisch. In comparison, the original sounded almost reasonable, like he didn't even want to torture the guy. Now, let's try it again, shall we? Who do you work for? But this one? Oh, he's loving it. Versuchen wir es nochmal. Ja, für wen arbeiten Sie? He's almost a precursor to Deathset from the New Order. A similar character appears later, the Alchemist in the Paderborn level. Ja, ja, diese alchemistische Kombination sollte wirken. Mist, wieder ein Fehler. Versuchen wir es weiter. He just sounds like such a creepy, sinister old wizard. It's amazing. Now on to the main baddies. Helga von Braun is perfectly cast, sounding pretty strict and stiff, perhaps a bit hammy and stilted here and there, but otherwise completely believable. Genug der Ausflüchte. Sagen Sie mir einfach ja oder nein. Sprechen Sie nicht mit mir wie mit Ihrer Mutter. Ich plane nichts. Ich tue etwas. Ich hole mir den Dolch. You don't hear much of the sorceress Blavatsky, but from what I can tell, she is also pretty good. Only issue I have is that her name suggests she's from Eastern Europe or Russia, likely even being a direct reference to a real person of the same name, but she has no accent of the sort. Ja, es ist wahr. 
Ich diene euch, mein dunkler Meister. It matters little since she has like two lines, but the original did keep it in mind. Also, what's really odd is that her singing is the same one as the English counterparts, but it's pitch shifted, sounding completely out of place. No clue why they did this. Perhaps because her voice is a little higher this time? Really wasn't necessary at all though. Now, the Dark Knight himself, Heinrich. I'll be honest, not a fan. They didn't get a voice actor with a deep, gravelly voice. Instead, opting to pitch shift someone with a much higher voice down. Was ich liebe wieder. Wer bist du? Es gibt viel zu erledigen. Aber ich spüre die Gegenwart eines anderen. It's just kind of unfortunate for the big evil bad guy since he sounds not nearly as cool as the original one. And the final German person of note is Death Set, aka Der Schädel. He is voiced by Renier Barken, who's had a lot of different roles over the years in movies, cartoons, audiobooks, ads, and of course, video games. Many of those were from various anime like Latin and Full Metal Alchemist, and in games like Gothic 2 and Assassin's Creed. He also voices Corvus in the intro of the game. Heinrich, deine Schreckensherrschaft muss enden. As Strese, he's not bad at all. Very strict and uptight, as a high-ranking P-Baby officer should be. Dieses Boot bricht innerhalb der nächsten Stunde zu Labor X auf. Torpedos oder nicht? Haben Sie das verstanden, Major? He can also be incredibly condescending, borderline psychotic. Es wird mir eine Freude sein, Sie Stück für Stück in Ihre Einzelteile zu zerlegen. Darf ich Sie jemandem vorstellen? Verwechseln Sie ihn bitte nicht mit den einfachen Prototypen. Das hier is the Krone meiner Schöpfung, der Übersoldat. Especially when he's bantering with you during the battle against the Übersoldat. Ich kann es kaum erwarten, dass er sie besiegt. Diese neue Panzerung ist fantastisch, nicht wahr? Vergeben Sie mir bitte, dass ich mich wie ein stolzer Vater benehme. However, I kind of feel like he's holding back. He simply doesn't feel as much of a villain here like he does in later titles, being more of a side character than a main threat. Then again, this was the first time he was introduced, so of course they hadn't quite nailed down his personality yet, and maybe they never even expected him to return. I personally think the voice they picked for him in the new order is flawless, but we'll get there when we get there. Let's just say his voice actor fits perfectly in with the wolves too. That's all the bad guys done. The good guys are mostly just okay, though a few stand out. The first one is the one I just like to call Glasses Guy. In the original, he had a very deep voice with a wonderful accent. So, advanced weapons, rocketry, chemical and biological research. Now, the occult. While here, he sounds much higher and intentionally stilted. Also, moderne Waffen. Raketentechnik, chemische und biologische Waffen. Und jetzt noch das Okkulte. I obviously prefer his English voice, but this one is so over the top that I can't dislike it. Jack, ich bin mir sicher, Sie haben noch was zu ergänzen. It's as if the roles were reversed between localizations. In the original, the Germans are stereotypes and the English characters were more grounded, but here it's the other way around. Jack is voiced by Joachim Pütz, who is mostly known for narrating weather forecasts, documentaries, audiobooks and games. He sounds so much like Sasha Nine from Psychonauts, in my opinion. It cracks me up. Wir wissen schon etwas länger von der Existenz der Burg. Doch erst kürzlich erfuhren wir von unseren Kontakten im Kreisauer Kreis im deutschen Widerstand, dass bizarre okkulte Rituale hier abgehalten werden. There's more here than meets the eye, but I've learned to keep it under strict control, and that's what I'm going to teach you. But my first thought when I heard him was that it reminded me so much of those bad Texas speech voices you can find in cheap iPhone games. He's not bad at all, I think he sounds great. But I just thought, oh my god, when is Germa gonna come in and have a laughing fit? Stop right there, die bastard. <laughs> die bastard. The Resistance member Kessler is also interesting. The original sounded old, weary and tired. I regret that I cannot accompany you any further in my condition. You must hurry. Helga's team has an excavation site at the graveyard at the end of town. The entrance to the crypt is there. Good luck. But this one is just kind of nice and soft. Tut mir leid, aber in meinem Zustand kann ich Sie nicht weiter begleiten. Sie müssen sich beeilen. Helgas Ausgrabungsteam ist auf dem Friedhof am anderen Ende des Dorfes. Da ist der Eingang zur Gruft. Viel Glück. 
Another one that reminds me a lot of the Half-Life 1 scientists. Likewise, Karl Willegut, yes, that's his name, I had to look it up too, similarly reminds me of German Half-Life, specifically Odis from Opposing Force. Unsere britischen Freunde dachten, sie können diese Bleispritze hier gebrauchen. Ich habe mich hier versteckt und gelauscht. Also diese Black Ops Typen, die haben so eine Art Bombe. He's just so dopey and lovable, it's wonderful. And I know I keep talking about Half-Life, but the two games are actually incredibly similar when it comes to the voice acting. For instance, Return to Cast Wolfenstein also suffers from characters talking over each other or doing overly long pauses between sentences. Unglaublich! Ich dachte wirklich, das alles sei nur eine Fantasiegeschichte. Ich glaube, die verrückte Hexe hat doch recht gehabt. Und wenn der Amerikaner an ihnen vorbei Dann kümmere kommt? ich mich selbst um ihn! Meiner Meinung nach können wir uns das nicht leisten. Aber es ist ihre Entscheidung. Dann ist es beschlossen. This is what happens when they don't account for the different lengths of voice lines. It's not as big of a deal here, being rare enough to never become a major issue. If anything, it actually works in the game's favor. As if the PE babies are too impolite to let each other finish their sentences, and the allies are too uptight to have a naturally flowing conversation. But in general, the voice acting is so extremely over the top that it's more often like a parody than an earnest performance. Ja, halt doch dein dummes Maul, dreckiges Schwein. Sehen Sie sich diesen Mond an. Schneider, wo ist mein 38er Latour? Ich habe doch vor 20 Minuten jemanden zum Weinkeller geschickt. Entschuldigung, Herr General. Ich werde mich sofort darum kümmern. Na dann mal los, Schneider. Hey, versuchst du immer noch einen Musiksender zu finden? Ja, aber das Wetter ist heute einfach zu schlecht. <lacht> Viel Glück! Danke, Willi. Some of the line deliveries were so dry compared to what was being said that it actually made me laugh out loud pretty hard. Ja, Rüger hier. Situation unter Kontrolle. Äh, und der Amerikaner? Tot. Wie sieht es an der Front aus? Hast du was gehört? Ich krieg nichts mit. Ich bewache hier nur eine Bombe. Was würden Sie sagen, wenn ich unseren Mann anweise? Er soll seine Augen und Ohren für jeden Bezug zum Paranormalen offen halten. Ich würde sagen, das ist eine sehr gute Idee. <laughs> Other times, characters having ordinary, realistic conversations while speaking like Looney Tunes figures. Hi, Rudy! Da hängt ein Fallschirm in dem Baum da drüben am See. Vielleicht ist nur einer von der schwarzen Schwadron beim Training falsch abgesprungen. Das passiert andauernd. Trainieren die denn heute? Keine Ahnung. Irgendwo hier ist ein Dienstplan. Such ihn doch, wenn dich das interessiert. Und wie entschärft man dieses Ding? Ich hab doch gesagt, der rote Draht. Oder oder war es der blaue? Äh, warte mal, ich, ich hol eben das Handbuch. Ach, egal. Sie sehen für mich eh alle grau. And some performances are incredibly stilted and awkward, but in a really weird way. They still sound like regular people, but exaggerate the pronunciations and completely ham up the sentences at random. Was? Die Leiter? Sie ist kaputt? Man hat uns hier drin gefangen. Macht euch bereit. Sie kommen. Unser Team hat die abtrünnigen Wissenschaftler gefunden. Sie brauchen ihre Hilfe. Schnell. Also diese Zeremonie lässt die Nerven wirklich blank liegen. Der Major hätte mir vor ein paar Wochen beinahe den Kopf abgerissen. Für nichts und wieder nichts. But it doesn't feel like that's because they're inexperienced or got bad direction. It seems almost deliberate. As if they hired accomplished actors and told them to dumb down their acting on purpose. I even got German Half-Life 2 vibes at times. Entschuldigung, aber ich habe meine Befehle. Was? Was? Und was soll ich mit dem ganzen Käse anstellen? Ich weiß nicht, vielleicht ein paar Brote schmieren. <laughs> And another line sounded like something straight out of L'Oreal. Du weißt doch, was Blavatsky in Holstein angestellt hat. Herr Müller Lüdenscheid, die Ente bleibt draußen. Herr Müller Lüdenscheid, ich bade immer mit dieser Ente. All of that seems to have been completely intentional because the game doesn't take itself seriously one bit. As if you're reading an old Captain America comic book where all the bad guys are evil buffoons and even the good guys are just walking stereotypes. 
And this is reflected elsewhere in the game too. I mean, in general, it's full of occult dominatrices, the living undead and even evil superhuman mutants. This isn't Call of Duty, it's Wolfenstein, the Stein with a wolf, the Wolfenstein. Sorry. And in the German version, they take this a step further. All the characters that had generic surnames received new ones that ironically fit the situation. So the person ordering for better security is called von Acht, with Acht translating to attention. The officer talking about treasure is called Gierig, meaning greedy. Dieter Gierig. <laughs> Another one, ungeschickt, i.e. clumsy, mentions better safety measures. Wolfgang ungeschickt. Ah. <laughs> uh. The security officer is named Wacher, like alert or guard. A soldier is called Schoßhund, a lap dog. And the one talking about better hygiene is called Schmutzig, meaning dirty. I know all the original had similar names, like ones referencing Hogan's Heroes or Dr. Strangelove, but here they're going all in. Such a small change, but which achieves so much. And that actually leads into the conclusion. Overall, the voice acting is pretty competent. It's a perfect blend of having experienced actors giving hammy performances. Again, very much like Half-Life 1 in that regard. It's not serious at all, because it really doesn't need to be. In fact, it's even better that it's not. I honestly prefer that these characters, especially the pea babies, sound so goofy and stupid. In the world of Return to Castle Wolfenstein, the German forces are all just big morons that really shouldn't have the power that they possess. Like there are villains in a piece of children's media, one step away from tying someone to the train tracks, or outlawing singing and friendship. And you're there to kick their butts and save the day. It's just so much more lighthearted and tongue-in-cheek, which I think works really well. It's a lot of fun to kill pea babies because they ran the concentration camps and exterminated millions of innocent people. But it can also be quite the downer because you realize they actually did do this in real life, but you can't bring any of these monsters to justice. It's all just make-believe, pretending that so many people didn't die for nothing. It just gets a bit exhausting because this horrible fictional world is a bit too real. Same reason why it feels heavy to play the Machine Games titles, since they are much more grounded in reality in so many ways. Fantastical, yes, but also based on actual events. And sometimes you just want to shut off your brain and kill a few bad guys simply for the heck of it. The original RTCW already did this, but I think the German port takes it further by turning all of these characters into cartoons. If it weren't for the blood and gore, this could almost be a Disney movie. And on the topic of that, I don't actually mind the censorship like it's done here. My biggest concern when games get cut is when the blood and gore is removed. Not only does it take away the impacts that the attacks have, but it even makes it more difficult to tell if you're even dealing any damage at times. It also makes the world feel so empty where the decorative gore is removed, since all the detail is just lost without being replaced with anything. But here, it's all there and accounted for. What isn't there is all the pea baby symbolism, but I don't think it's a negative change at all. Unlike in Wolfenstein 3D for the SNES, they actually got creative at times and found good workarounds by using the Wolfenstein logo instead of any swastikas. And it actually sort of justifies the game's title, especially because all the bad guys are called the wolves. It all just fits together like it was always meant to be this way. Similar to the voice acting, it's more lighthearted and less serious. Wolfenstein was never, ever about historical accuracy, which Mecha Hitler can tell you a lot about. And they evidently wanted to continue that here by bringing back the scientific experiments and the occult. It's true that the pea babies are often associated with either of those, and even performed action experiments on humans in real life. But it was less of a, let's get these holy artifacts to create super mutant robot soldiers to win the war, and more of a, let's exterminate and mutilate actual human beings just because we deem them as lesser. And I'm really glad the Wolfenstein games aren't showing the latter part, because it'd just be one of the most horrifying and depressing series to ever exist. But it doesn't want to teach about actual atrocities, it wants to have fun. And it's not censoring history, because this history never existed. So this is less Schindler's List and more Indiana Jones. In that sense, it's not important for the pea babies to be actual pea babies, since it's only an aesthetic difference anyway. Is it fun to kill actual pea babies? Of course. But it's not necessarily worse if they only appear to be like pea babies. And like I said in my Wolfenstein 3D video, it makes it easier for me to enjoy these games since they're not connected to real people that committed real crimes against humanity. So with all that said, this game definitely belongs in the so bad it's good category of German ports, but even leaning towards the just good one. It has its flaws, but those only make it unique. And they also add a ton of flavor that almost puts it on the same level as the original. But let me know down below what you thought about this port. Do you think the changes are good or bad? Should the wolves have been pea babies all along? 
Are you sick of me saying pee babies all the time? Write it down below. The next game on the list is Wolfenstein 2009 and I'm pretty sure I'm the only person in the world that actually liked it. So please tell me if you want to see that too. And if you've enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, a comment, sharing it with others and perhaps even donating to my Patreon. Anything helps and is appreciated. But for now, thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day and goodbye.